make the woman the Black Panther. See, like I read the comic books, even uh, Shuri didn't play Black Panther prominent, prominently, right? She wasn't that big of it, right? T'Challa is still Black Panther, right? He's the prominent figure. Because you don't understand that if you're not, I don't know, black, you might understand that they want, right, young black boys to look up to a powerful, strong male figure, right? So in this, which Black Panther was, right? This is, you, you always talk about representation. I mean, I hear representation by uh, out of the ass, right? So that was a representation for black boys, a hero that they can look up to, you know, an image that they could aspire to, greatness, right? So they saw a black hero. That's the point. And now in the second movie, uh, which I'm, I'm saying I haven't watched it, but from what I'm, I'm, I know the premise, that now you're having black boys, what? You want black, black boys to look up to, to what? Women heroes? I mean, like, how's that even like part fair, part representation? I mean, seriously, I, I feel like we're, we really are shitting on men completely because you talk about the comics well again like i said t'challa is prominently black panther right now right now in the comics so really you 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 have no leg to stand on yeah she's been black panther so they've replaced you could have another character play t'challa right there because again you talk about representation well black people Black men, especially, want representation for their black boys. We want a strong, powerful black man to to show to young black boys. That's the point that they're making. I'm not talking about other arguments of it. You know, I'm not talking about how good the movie is or anything. But I'm talking about the fans that say, "Oh, you never read the comic books." See, see, you're you're thinking very surface level because even if you say the comic books, like I said. T'Challa is Black Panther right now in the comic books. Okay, so really, that's that's not a good argument because yeah, she been Shuri's been Black Panther, but she's not predominantly Black Panther. So your argument is very stale, right? But it's a deeper meaning to it, right? People are talking about it because they want good representation for young Black boys. That's the point. Okay, so let's agree that it should not be okay to use racial slurs against any ethnicity in any film like this. Because the way these characters talk about white people is incredibly regressive. Because boy does the main character Shiri love throwing around that term colonizer, which is really kind of funny to me. Because she's got some kind of holier than thou attitude when we know that the Wakandans, while colonization and slavery was going on, they sat around and did nothing about it. Because something that allowed Europeans to be so effective in the Americas and in Africa was their superior technology. And yet in this universe, the Wakandans had basically space age technology since forever. So really, what pedestal is she standing on? Then we get comments like, wow, a white man in chains. Now I've seen everything. How incredibly ignorant are you of world history? You think that white people have never been in chains? And if all of this racism served a purpose, it would be okay, but it doesn't. Because on one hand, these guys are supposed to be technologically and philosophically superior to the rest of the world. But their prejudice towards people based on their skin color seems, well, all too familiar and disappointing. Is this really a direction we like to see in the world today? So I recently put a post up saying that Wakanda Forever was trash. Now, a lot of you were in the comments section and were very upset because I said that. But hold on, hear me out, because I got a very good reason. So I hear in the beginning there's a tribute to Chadwick Boseman, you know, T'Challa. Even though I still feel they should have recast T'Challa so that T'Challa could actually live on. But the fact that they didn't recast him is symbolic of something. I don't know if you notice or not, but none of the other heroes of other groups actually die. I mean, it was bad enough that Chadwick Boseman died in real life, but you also killed off the character in the movie. So now we don't have a T'Challa in the MCU. And you're probably like, wait, what is it symbolic of? I mean, aside from the fact that they're trying to replace all of the male characters with female heroes, there's also the racial aspect of it that I'm surprised a lot of you missed. And that put very simply is that black men seem to be more valuable dead than they are. Marvel's not doing themselves any favor with this. And, and I want to make sure I say this in a way that's not conspiratorial, but 
Marvel is not going to have a good leg to stand on when people talk about not representing, you know, black men right. or allowing uh, uh, black men to, you know, be devalued at the expense to uplift other people. Now, what I don't like here specifically is the fact that Mbaku's character was primarily a punching bag for other people. I don't like that because what ended up happening was you only used Mbaku to emphasize how strong he was, right? So you saw him literally pick up somebody with a spear and fling them like there was like, you know, a little golf ball or something. Like he flung people and, you know, beating his chest like, yo, I'm the big strong guy here, right? And then what happens? He goes right up against Namor and gets humbled and punched out. Okay, fine. We've seen that happen. But then you fast forward. Once you see Shuri take on the mantle and she has to like, for whatever reason, get into an instant arm wrestling match, beat him just for him to be like, okay, yep, you the Black Panther now. And then you follow that up with her saying like, 